eighty percent of Nigerian men are having like they are sleeping with trans girls. Some men that don't even meet like Nigerian trans girls, they will import trans girls from abroad to nigeria when they put something about trans people on blogs even girls they will come and be bashing trans girls but your boyfriend that be their husband are in trans girls dm do you also get a hard on there are some trans girls that are oh they're the ones that are even giving the yes lagos married men we test you and be like ah i want you to like fuck me but they are married though what's the future for trans women in terms of like relationships marriage i'm sorry yo. what you can do is just to try and travel because if you travel you can see a man there hello and welcome to another episode of doing's corner on today's episode we're going to be talking about embracing identity but I'll start. What's what does identity really mean to you guys? I'd like to know. Maybe you leave it in the comments. But for me, I think identity is who we are behind the mask that we wear, behind our achievements, behind everything we've done with our lives, who we really are within ourselves. And you know, we all put on masks and a lot of us struggle with accepting who we really are. But there are people that are brave enough to accept who they are and they don't mind the judgment that comes with it. And we have one of those brave people with us in the studio today. So we have a very beautiful lady in the studio today, but I'll leave her to introduce herself. Hi, good evening. Thank Hi. you for joining us. So can you tell us your name and your age and anything, the reason you're here? Okay. Um, my name is Ella of Lagos. Um, I'm 20 years old. <clears throat> I'm a transgender woman living in Nigeria. Great. First of all, I need to mention that you're very beautiful. Thank First you. of all, Thank I love the makeup. You. I love the hair. It's <laughs> giving. You. Thank you. Okay, so you mentioned that you're a transgender woman living in Nigeria. Yes. Okay. First of all, I need to ask, at what point did you realize that I don't... Okay, so let me start with this. Being a transgender woman, it means that you were biologically born as a man, right? A male. Yes, child. I was assigned a male at birth, yes. Okay, so now, at what point did you think I need to change my gender? I'm not. And what? What point did you think of that? And what led to that? What were? You, how were you feeling? I just knew that I was different, like um, from the start, like when I was still small. But I was just trying to like um, adapt to like um, adapt to. Um, feel like because of the society mm -hmm. and how everybody around me were because the family like where I come from people like me like are not accepted because I come from Benue States mm -hmm. and um, even being gay is not like um, like a child's play there yeah. talk more of you coming out and say that ah, I'm a trans person you know, they are going to kill you so I was just like um, trying to um, tune it down as of right now, I'm like 20 years. So when I was like um, 16, that was when I started knowing that um, I knew that I was different from small when I was growing. Right. But because of my parents, my mom was a um, Sunday school teacher oh. and my dad too was like a very strict person. So I was just trying to like you know now and all my siblings were away so I was the only person staying with my mother and I don't want her to get angry because I love her so much so I was just trying to like uh, tune everything down but she knew I was different like like from the start she always knew I was different she asked me there was one point she asked me like ah come this speaking I want to ask you something like because you are different are you gay are you um what what like what are you really doing I just thought that, that I was not gay, but I just felt like I was different. And I, I, I just felt like I was a girl. And that was how I felt inside. She said, we are going to pray about it, that she gave birth to me as a man. Oh. I was going to be a boy, that I would give birth to children and stuff like that. So we we pray about it, we did fasting and pray about it. And yeah, that was it. So something led to 
one like something something sha i had to relocate because i was staying with time being wasted so i had to relocate to come and stay with my big sister in abuja so that was how so i was she now said because i was making hair then i was doing all those she now said um since you are making hair let me go and enroll you so that you learn it very well as at that point i think i was like 17 so she took me to like um all those stylists now somebody that she knows and was like close to her so from there that person was a quiet so, so from there i i was now free i now start meeting like other trans people i now start noticing like i now start noticing like they're like they're they people are, like they, you yes uh, i can be myself no matter that. so that was when i now noticed that uh, this is how it's going to be. Like, this is who I am. And since then, um, it has been okay. I've been fine and oh yes. Because when before I transition, I've been to a, like, bullies. Because I was still very feminine mm-hmm. as of then. Like, I was very feminine. If I go to places, they'll be like, ah, is this one a boy or gay? This one, like, all those things. But since I transitioned, I've not, like, had any bad experience. I can't say. I have not had any. It you has mean- been... I'm so sorry I caught you short. Yeah. You mentioned that, you know, you knew you were different from a young age. Yes. But you also mentioned that this whole journey started about four years ago when you were 16. Yes. So when you were like five, six, do you remember what life was like then? Did you feel like there's something off? I, I, I want to put on skirts. I want to put on dresses. Did you ever feel that way as a child growing up? Yes, I feel that way. I wear my mom's clothes, my sister's clothes and stuff like that. Yes, I feel that way. But my family was not like, um, they don't, like like I said, where I come from, that kind of thing is like an abomination. Mm-hmm. If they see that there's a child like that in, they, if they see that there's a child like that in your family, they are going to see like is a cost family. Mm. This thing I'm saying now, people are from, that are from Benue states, they will know that that kind of thing. I don't think there's like plenty of trans people. Like I, I only know of one trans person from Benue state that is Miss Sarah, but she's in like abroad. So they are not those kind of people. So I was very scared and I don't want my mother to be angry because I love her so much. That was why I was just trying to like, even when I was in secondary school, they call me boy girl, all those kind of things because I was like very different. Yes. Okay, so eventually when you you mentioned that, you know, you went to Abuja to stay with your sister and then you started meeting people that like you. I understand the power of community. When we find like-minded people, it's easier for us to be ourselves. It's easier for us to come out. We feel more comfortable about ourselves. But before you decided to go on this transition, were you, did it make you depressed that you felt like you were trapped in the body that you didn't want to be in? Because, I'm so sorry. Because if there's one thing that I've heard a lot from a lot of like trans people, there's some sort of like psychological effects before they do this transition. like, if almost like feeling like you're trapped in a body that you don't want to be in. So can you talk us through that experience, what it was like for you? Yes, it has always been like that. It has always been like that for me. But I was just scared of coming out. That was just the truth. Were you sad? I was very sad. I was not happy. Like I was not myself. I was not comfortable. But because of my loved ones and people around me, I have to like try my best i was still very feminine Mm -hmm. but i was just trying to like uh, let me be this boy but it get to some point i had to run away because my sister like all my family were very strict like like they don't play so it get to some point i have to like run i come to lagos Mm -hmm. but when i get to like when I, i came to lagos it wasn't like i knew anybody here i just had to run because i wanted to be myself right Yes, that and I was... think you did something very brave, to be honest, because a lot of people are stuck with this. There's so many people living like this, and you know they're so scared, just like you mentioned, because of the kind of family you came from. There's so many people that share similar story to yours, and they cannot come out because of how they perceive that people would judge them, or their family, or whatever. So, yes. yeah, I'm happy that you finally accepted yourself for who you are. But I have a question. Okay. There are people that say that uh, this is not normal. 
is either this person was abused as a child or this person was, you know, there, there, there are a lot of like theories to this thing. Or um, usually they're abused or maybe they had a parent that was acting like this that they saw or they had a family member. Did you did you ever face any form of like sexual abuse while growing up? Or mm -hmm. did you ever see any family member that made you feel like, ah, you know what, I want to be like this person? Do, would you say that that was what caused all of this? Not really. To me, I just feel like um, every family has like a queer person. Every family. Yes. <laughs> that's you, a, big, that's you, a lot. Every I'm not, family. Like, yes, because you might not know. You Like, as you, you might not know. Other people might, like, Every family has it. That's just the truth. Every. Every is quite a broad... <laughs> that's <laughs> quite a broad statement to make. I know you would copy because every family has it. Like, mm. every family has, like, that one queer person. It might, be, it might be your cousin, your uncle, your somebody. They might be hiding it. You don't know. Right. But every family has it. It's normal. And those people that used to say that, ah, you are trans or you are gay or you are this thing because um, your family, your parents didn't raise you where is a lie. Because me like this, my parents like dealt with me. My father said that any day I wear like a, a, a girl dress, he's going to bomb me to ashes. As of right now, I'm not talking to my father. So those kind of, like, you cannot say that it's because is like is because your parents failed your stuff like that. That's why you are trans. It's not even like that because being trans is a lot. Mm. You will buy hormones. It's not even safe. Like many things. So being trans is not like it's just for fun or you want to have fun. Or you want, it's a lot. Being trans is like very stressful. Like it's not even easy at all. That is something that some people like you want to do for fun. It's not something like that. It's just who you are. So people don't really understand. They'll be like your parents didn't train you where mm. stuff like that. It's not even like that. There's a statement that people make. Mm. I don't even know if I agree with it or not, to be honest, because I don't know. And I would never be able to speak on something that I am not, so I don't know. But okay. would you say that being a being part of the queer community at all, whether you're gay, you're bisexual, or you're trans, or whatever, do you think it's a choice? Or do you think people are completely just born however they're born, and they, they don't have a choice? To me, I don't feel it is a choice. I just feel it's who they are. There are many queer people in Nigeria plenty there are many queer people in nigeria but they are just on a low they are just hiding i just feel like it's just who they are like being queer is just something like you are born with mm -hmm. i don't feel like it's something that you can because even if you try to copy it you are going to get tired because right. you cannot just stay and say you want to copy something that people don't like like Queer people are being abused and all those things every day. So you, you cannot just say, ah, I want to be queer, I want to be gay, I want to be trans and be all those things because other people are. Why mm. the, like, the, like the whole Nigeria don't like it and stuff like that? You cannot just, it's not, it's not that way. I mm. just feel like it's something you are born with, yes. And that makes a lot of sense, actually. So that takes me to my next question. Mm. When you finally found a community of people that you felt like you identified with and you felt better about, yes. at what point did you decide that, you know what, I want to start actually transforming myself? What made you come to that realization? Because there are a lot of people that are queer and, you know, they don't necessarily go through the process of oh, whether it's surgery or whether it's hormone, I don't know. We'll probably get to that later on. But, like, I feel like there must have been some conviction within you that made you say, you know what, I'm ready to start going through this process. And also, did you discuss it with your mom? Because you emphasized a lot about how much you love your mom and you don't want to make her sad. So did you, how, this, how did this go? Did this go down well with your family? Did you discuss with them? How did you even come to that decision that, you know what, I'm ready to start this transition process? Okay. <clears throat> it's just started like um, one day. Um, my mom is late, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. So... That was the main reason I came to Abuja to stay with my sister, like, because she was no man. She was a person I was staying with. She was a... So, as I came to stay with my sister in Abuja, she, my sister don't like anything. Like, she doesn't want to hear that uh, I'm being, I'm acting like a girl or anything. You know, now, neighbors will talk, people around will talk, ah, this is your brother, or they do like all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. My sister don't like it. My sister... 
don't just want my sister just wants me to be like ah they gave it to me as man I, I should so there was one point I just looked at myself and I was like oh um, I cannot be because I was working I'm a stylist so I was working um in a salon um as of then my madam <clears throat> she understands and she likes me because I'm I'm very good. So she likes me very well. So she understands me and she accepts me because I was very feminine. So she accepts me and I was working there. So it gets to some point she like wanted to relocate and she was closing the place. So as of that point, I had no like option. I have to like go and look for maybe somewhere else to like start working. I'll go to this and they'll ah, this one, a man, I've been a woman because I, I was not having breasts and I was very feminine. This one, a man or a woman, why you they do like girl, those kind of things? I just got tired. And as of then, because my sister was staying in some like one part of Abuja and I was working in another part. So they gave me where I was staying and stuff. So just one day, I just decided, ah, I'm going to go. I don't care how it's going to be. I need to just leave because. I just feel like if I um, accept myself and I um, start transitioning and be my real self, everything is going to like go uh, like smoothly. So I just stood up one day and said I was going to leave. And I now left. I came to Lagos. I was not like having anywhere I was staying. I was having just one friend. Mm -hmm. So she helped me for some period of time. Just small, 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 everything was going well. So as of that point, I caught communication with my elder sister because I knew that if she knew where I was or anything about me, she was going to track me. I had to change numbers and everything so that I would not, like, would not be in contact. Right. So for like three years or two years, we were not talking. I was just surviving on my own. I was just mm. trying and everything. I was just doing it on my own. So it got to some point. The person that she took me to, to go and learn that stylist, she still went back to go and meet the person and told the person that, because like in my family, we love each other very, like the way my mother trained Crazy. us, like raised us, like the love. So she go and meet the person and told the um, guy that, see, 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 see you, my... I cannot hear from me and stuff like that. So the guy now reached out to me and stuff. I, I was still even scared to even call her on the phone. But as of then, I was trying. I already like rented an apartment and I was trying. I was already doing well for myself. So I, I just tried one day and I called her. She told me that. Ah. And her husband too was a nice man. He understand. He, he, he told her that there is nothing there they can change about the matter. Mm. That they should just accept me. That so far the love is there. They should just accept me as who I am. So she I called her. She said she loved me. That she, I should she, she, please she she just wants to see me. Stuff, 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 stuff. We just talked, shall we talk everything out and we were cool because she was staying in Abuja. I have to go to Abuja and I visited her. Like as of now, we were we are very yeah, cool. calm. I'm very happy that you have the family support now because it must be very tough yes. for people that you know don't have family members that support them or accept them. I can only imagine how tough it is, especially being like a queer person mm -hmm. or even much more tougher a trans person in Nigeria. Can you walk us through the challenges faced as a queer trans person living in Nigeria? What are the things that you you faced? Okay, um, as a trans person, I'm sorry, but as for the gay community, I don't really know much. Is it not the same thing? Because that is, is so different. It's so it, confusing, it, it, sorry. It's just like one umbrella okay. that has like, there is gay, lesbian, bisexual, even pansexual. Mm -hmm. So as for me, as a trans person... I've not like had any bad experience. I will not lie. I've not had any. Because if I don't tell you I'm trans, you will not know. Um, I've not had any. It has just been smooth. Because me, one thing I know is that I I just don't go to where I'm not wanted. Right. And I don't try to like... Me, I know my reality. I cannot be a real girl. Like I'm not a cis woman. So I am not trying to like 
belittle cis women or try to be in their spaces because that's where the trouble starts. What's a cis woman? Please? Like you know, you're cis. Because oh, okay. you are a born female. It's straight. Yes, it's born. straight one. is oh, okay. woman. So, like, so I, I don't try to, like, go to their spaces because they don't like it. All cis women think, like, trans people want to take their, like, maybe glory or shine or something. <laughs> or they want to be a girl. But I don't know about other trans people. As for me, I don't want to be cis. I don't want to be, like, I know that I cannot be cis. It's the reality. It's the truth. There's no way I'm going to be a biological female. I was born a boy. I know that and I'm trans and I'm proud of it. So it's not like I want to be a girl. I want to be a cis girl. Okay. I know things that me, I cannot do as a trans girl. I don't even brag about it. So I don't like, I don't believe to women. That's just what works for me. And I don't go to spaces I'm not wanted. I'm like, yes. Okay. So now speaking about transforming, Yes. Right, I know that there are two ways. There's the surgical way, and then there's the hormonal way. Right. So now, can you confirm which of these you've done? Have you gone through the surgery to mean that the male reproductive organ you no longer have it? <laughs> okay. Or is it the hormonal method that you've gone through? Even if you want to do surgery, mm -hmm. you still take hormones. Because, mm -hmm. yes, you still take hormones to some point before you can do, like, the gender reassignment. Because if you want to do, like, breast augmentation surgery, now, you have to have some breast tissue before you can do surgery. As for me, I don't know about the future, but as of right now, I don't think I want to do gender reassignment surgery. My reasons are because if you... My own reasons are because gender reassignment surgery is, like, as I'm born me, my body produces the testosterone. Yeah. If I don't, if 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 I've done like a gender reassignment now, I will have to be taking estrogen for the rest of my life. Oh. That means if 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 they, if they do gender reassignments for me, mm -hmm. they're going to take like my all my testosterone. Like where produces the testosterone for me? Mm -hmm. That means my body is not going to produce estrogen. It's not going to produce the testosterone, which means I'll be taking estrogen hormones. hormones. For the rest of my life. And there are some times I want to rest. Like these three months, I don't want to take hormones, so let me rest more. I can stay and nothing will happen. But if I do gender reassignments, it's something like I want to be taking, like I'm, I, I don't think I want to do this. Like I don't know. Maybe the future, but for now. I, so can you, are you on the hormone? Yes, I've been on hormones for like two years. Two years. Yes. Okay, so we're going to leave you with our thoughts. We have to go on a quick break, but we'll be back shortly. Okay. Welcome back, guys. We're still on the topic of embracing identity, and we're still seated with the beautiful Ella of Lagos. So you were talking to us before we went on break. You were yes. like, you've been on this hormonal therapy for two years now. Can you please walk us through the process of this hormonal therapy? Okay. And are there hospitals in Lagos that offer this, or in Nigeria that offer this process? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they are, because it's not even safe for me to like go to hospital and tell them I want hormones. They might arrest me. I'm scared. So as for me, I there's a there's where I buy them from, but not like okay. hospital. Okay. So there are two types of hormones. There are two types of hormones. There is like the testosterone blocker. There is um, then estrogen. Okay. The testosterone blocker now is to um, like suppress your testosterone. Like that's the one you are born with. Then you take estrogen. Estrogen is the one that will, uh, make you grow breasts, uh, more feminine, more soft, like more curvy and all those. But testosterone blocker now is going to like block because you cannot take only um, estrogen. It's not going to like, your body is not going to be soft. So Okay, yeah. so you have to take the testosterone blocker and the estrogen. So yeah. that's like contains the testosterone and then the estrogen then gives you more estrogen. Okay. And then when you start, first of all, when you start taking these things, what are the effects that you see in your body when you start taking? And how soon do you start seeing these things? Also, are these, are these hormones like injectables or are they like pills? Yes. Um, as for me, as soon as I started like a week 
the mood swings like you can run mad if you don't have like um mm. a very strong head because it's going to make you sometimes you can just stand and start crying it will make you be so emotional like that's how it is it will make you emotional you will be having like mood swings you'll be aggressive for no reasons stuff like that so i think those are the side effects yeah. the ones that have happened to me because i know i just know about myself so but in terms of like your the reproductive parts what's changes so when you start taking this um hormonal therapy stuff you start seeing like fuller breast for like a man for example like things like that and also does it reduce the size of the penis does it stop the function of that does it <laughs> no I'm, I'm, i know that this question might sound funny but it's actually to yes educate us. i know that they want to know so the thing is that it's not going to reduce the size but <laughs> but it's going to like the thing i know is that it's going to make you develop like breasts your okay. breast is going to like come out like it depends on body shape, the way your body is. Because there are some trans girls that are very feminine. Like they have, like they they, they, they already have like plenty of um, estrogen, estrogen in their body. So if they now take like a little bit of that hormone, estrogen and blocker, it's going to like be very okay for them. Their boobs are going to be all very obvious and stuff like that. But as of the penis, it's not going to shrink it, but it will just make your libido low, which means you're not going to like, like be like very active like a man. Mm. Like the way the man would be always horny, I want to like have sex. You, the way man wakes up in the morning, the addicts will be like erect and all this kind. It's not going to be like that. It will take like when you like somebody very much for you to like maybe get hard or something okay okay and then i was going to ask about um your sexual orientation okay i hope you're comfortable with the question yeah it's fine. okay so now that you you are on this journey i'm i'm assuming that the hormonal therapy is a long term thing it's not something that you just do for 2 years and stop no it's like a long term thing it's like something you take forever forever you okay. can uh, it's not even advisable to stop, but you know it's not very um, advisable to like take pills too much. Okay. So you can give yourself like two, three months break and then start again. As for me now, I've been like um, seven months break because I just wanted to like, I'm tired. Let me just rest. Relax. So when you go on this break, the breast does not reduce, nothing, it just, everything just stays the way it already is? Yes, it stays. Okay, so I want us to talk about your sexual orientation. So, mm -hmm. would you say, are you attracted to men or women now? I'm straight. I like men. I don't like girls. But there are trans girls that like girls, so... Okay. Yes. So, you are attracted to... Men. Men. Yes. Does that make you straight? Okay, that makes you straight because you're a woman now. Yes, so I identify as a woman. You identify yes. as a woman. Okay, so you're attracted to men. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you... Obviously, have sexual interactions with men. Yes. Are there men in Nigeria that indulge in these things? Because it's almost like we hear about it a lot in social media, but we don't mm. really see it happen like that. But I'm sure that within the community, we see some of these things <laughs> happening. So can you talk us through what the process is like with like meeting men and stuff like that? One thing I'm going to say is that 80% of Nigerian men are having, like, they are sleeping with trans girls. That's hmm. the truth. 80%. They you do men. a lot of... <laughs> okay, I'll let you speak. I know what I'm saying. 80% is quite, it's quite a yes, lot. Yes, it's plenty. I know, but that's the truth. There are men, eh? there are some men that don't even meet, like, Nigerian trans girls. They will tell you that I don't want to meet Nigerian girls because maybe they are, they are scared. Like, one thing will lead to another thing. They are... They, they will import trans girls from abroad to Nigeria. Plenty men in Nigeria are having things with trans girls. But one thing you will know is that those men are not going to marry you. That's one me I know. Mm. That those men are not going to be... Nothing serious. They just want to like try their fantasies and maybe if they like you, they come back again. Nothing really serious. But plenty men are hanging out with trans girls. When they post something about trans people on blogs, ah, all those women, they'll come and be like, 
this one is this one, this one is this one. Even girls, they will come and be bashing trans girls. But your boyfriend, that be their husbands are in trans girls' DM. But they are using them for cover up. That's just mm. the truth. You will see a man and he will tell you that. <sighs> Is you I want so like I I see myself with you, but the society I'm not free. Like I cannot like um just be with you, but it's you I want. Some girls now, if their boyfriend are with them and they are having like maybe a sexual something or anything, what is in their boyfriend's head is that trans like mm. you know like they are just using like the girls for like um this is girls for like cover up most plenty like plenty because they will come to comment session even men that are sleeping with trans girls they will still come to comment session and be saying rubbish or be tweeting rubbish about trans people but in their um closed doors they are still like hooking up with trans people, trying to see them, all those kind of things. Because mm. it's just like, so men, men sees us as um, fantasy. Mm. Many people are not going to like accept it, but that's just the truth. As a trans girl in Nigeria, no man is going to marry you. There is no how you would do it. No matter how fine you are, there's no man that is going to marry you. What if you've gotten the surgery? What if you've taken off the penis and, you know... Taking off the penis is not really easy the way um, people, people make it. Yes, it's not really easy. It's a lot. It's, it's, do you think, like, you just going out to, like, going to the hospital to lie down and say, ah, chop off my penis. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not something that is very, that is very, very easy. So, even though, even though you have the surgeries, I'm not sure any Nigerian man wants to marry a trans girl. Let me know life for you. Even outside, Ni- maybe outside Nigeria, Sha, a Nigerian person can marry a trans person outside. But in this Nigeria, I'm not sure because those men, what is in their head is that fantasy of me having sex with a, with a girl that has like maybe a dick. After they are done with one, they will go to another one. That's how they are doing. They will be jumping from one trans girl to another. So I think there's this question that came to mind while you were speaking. So you being the girl now, Mm -hmm. right? And then this man is coming to you and saying, oh, I like you, I find you attractive, I want to sleep with you. Do you also get a hard-on from sleeping with the the man? Uh, There are some trans girls that are the... I don't know how to do it. Oh, they're the ones that even give in the... Yes, plenty Lagos Lagos married men who test you and be like, ah... I want you to, like, fuck me, all this kind of thing. But they are married, though. Hmm. <laughs> their, their wives don't, do. This is what I'm saying. But I just feel like their wives are not comfortable with it. It's not like maybe they are gay. I will not say they are gay because they cannot allow, like, a full-grown man to, like, um, maybe uh, fuck them and stuff like that. But they can allow their wife to fuck them if 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 their wife make um makes them like feel comfortable they will tell their wife ah, baby i want you to use strap on me all those kind of things but their wife they, they will be thinking like ah, how will my wife feel all those kind of things they will now come out and be looking for a girl that has like a dick hmm. so most men they like it plenty <laughs> plenty do <dude>. hmm. <laughs> Speaking, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't want us to like make this into a joke because the people that this is actually, this is their life. Like the people that are struggling with this and, (laughs) you know, I can imagine that it's tough for some people to navigate through this. So I want us to like maintain some form of like, you know, understanding and, you know, decorum for people that are struggling with it. Yes. But, um, now you made me laugh. I made me forget my question. Um, okay. But I was going to ask a question. Is there any surgery to like, for people that go through the surgery of actually taking off the penis, is there a reconstruction surgery to create a vagina? Yes, now that is gender there? reassignment surgery. Oh, okay, so they actually create the vagina? Yes, there are plenty of trans girls that have done it. They hmm. have vagina, but I am not sure they can give birth. That's, right. what, I That's what I That's what I was going to ask, actually. I, I'm not sure, like, any trans girl can get pregnant, except they want to adopt Right. Yes. So, and then you mentioned that these men would never marry the trans women. So, what's the future for trans women in terms of like relationships, marriage? Is it like, well, I'm never going to get married. I'm just going to keep having fun for the rest of my life. What's I'm that? sorry, yo. To Nigerian trans girls, 
what you can do is just to try and travel. Because if you travel, you can see a man there. Because the culture there is different from here. It's not like there are no men that can marry trans girls here. Mm. But what would people say? Even if you keep it as secret, there is no way secrets can hide forever. It's going to come out. So what me I will know, I will say is that even if you have like somebody that loves you here, you people should plan and like plan it and just leave. That's just the best way. Because it's not going to happen here. Like, even if it happens, it's not going to last. Mm. There is one way or the other. Even if you are like a dear trans um, woman, like very discreet, nobody knows you are trans or anything. It's not going to come out. There is no way. Right. It will just take time. So the best thing is just to travel, just leave Nigeria. If you want to like have that uh, life, you, you, you are a lover person, you want to have um, a man, you want to get married, not all girls want that, right? right? So it's not, if you just want that for yourself, just try and travel. Just try and leave Nigeria. So bringing it back to you personally now, do you want to, do you intend to have a family one day? Are you looking at having kids <laughs> one day? I have a man. <laughs> You have a man. Yes, I do. Oh, I'm happy for you, actually. Yes, thank you. I have. Uh, yes, I, I want to have a family. Sometimes I think about, like, how is it going to happen? But I just feel like with time, as time is going, there is always going to be a way out. Right. There's always going to be a way, way out. Because in, like, um, maybe, like, 10, 15 years, we don't know that... Like, we didn't know that we are going to be where we are now. So, so with time, I just feel like everything is going to, like, there's always going to be a way. Mm. That's all me I know. Okay, so let's say it happens for you and you have your own beautiful family one day. Yes. And one of your kids comes to you and says, Mommy, mm -hmm. you know, I think I don't want to be a girl anymore. I don't want to be a boy. I want to... How would you take that conversation? Would okay. you be comfortable with that? Okay. Um, we have a call. Okay, I should continue. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to take you to... If you come to me, if my child comes to me and tell me, Mommy, I don't want to be a boy. Mm -hmm. I want to be a girl. I will ask the child... Like, is this, like, what you really want for yourself and stuff? If the child tell me, yes, mommy, I don't want to be a girl. I don't want to be a boy. I want to be a girl. Mm -hmm. I think what I would do is just to take the child to, like, um, um, a therapist. Yes. Right. I would take the child there so that the therapist will, like, ask the child some questions and... Like, I just feel like that is the best way. Because some children, some parents now, their child is not comfortable. Their child cannot go and tell them, Mommy, this is who I am. Because right. they don't make their children feel, like, comfortable. They, like, they are, it's very good to make your child... Like, as a mother, when your child is growing up, before anybody, you're supposed to know, like, this is who my child is. This is home. And this thing is not something you can change. If you like pray to it tomorrow, there, there are some people that will come and be like, ah, I was trans. I did transition exactly. back to a man. Mm. It's a lie. That means it's like a gay man that follow the trend. Because there are some gay men that follows, like there are some gay boys that would like, maybe they, are, they, look, they look feminine. And mm -hmm. people tell them that ah, you're going to be fine as a girl. Do not start transitioning. So when they get to some st certain stage, they will not be like, they will not start being depressed. Mm. They, that's not who you are. So they will start now the transitioning back. Some self will now go and do surgery for breast, all those things. They will still take it out and still turn back to man. But it's not like they are straight. They are still gay. Hmm. There's no way you will be gay. Even there are some people that will be like, ah, they would um, do this one, no. I was gay. I'm now straight. There is nothing like that. You can just... But we see it. a lot of, like, testimonies like that. It's like, people lie. that go to church and say, I was... <laughs> so, you think it's all a lie? It's a lie. Okay, I think we have a call now. Let's take the call, and then we'll get back to the conversation. Right. Uh We lost the call. So sorry. Okay, so we'll go back to the conversation. So, you're saying it's impossible to pray with the gay? It's a lie. Like, it, it can't happen. Hmm. I don't feel like 
being um gay or queer is something you practice you, you just stay and feel you it's it it doesn't happen like that it's something you are born with we have another call hello good evening hello good evening hello and we lost it again i guess it's not in the <laughs> It's not in the lines for that person, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can continue. So I just feel like anybody that is queer, you are going to be queer forever. Yeah, you can just tune it down and say, uh, I don't want to be out there, or I want to be discreet. I don't want people to know I'm queer. But inside you, you are queer. There are some married men that are not even happy in Hello. their marriage. I'm so sorry. It's fine. And we're back. Hello, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Hello. Please, can we hang Hello. up? Okay. You know, we speak a lot about married men that yes. are actually like gay or they're into like trans women. But are there married women who are into trans women or trans men? Are there married women like that are into people that were girls before and are now guys? Or maybe even married women that are into trans women that still have like a penis, but they want to be, they yes, want a trans no. woman to like sleep with them. Yes, there is. Even, um, even um, girl, uh, women that are like girls that are not married, mm. they are plenty. There are girls that will tell you, ah. I like you. I like you as you are like this, stuff like that. There are still girls that will, uh, women that will reach out to you. There are still even men that will reach out to you that, as a trans person, that wants you to like sleep with their, their wife. wife. And they want to like maybe watch or stuff like that. They are In this Nigeria? They are. They are plenty. Yes, they mm. are plenty. Like, so marriage is, is, they are just open-minded. They want to try new things. It's when maybe the husband is not comfortable with the wife. Maybe the husband is scared of the wife. That is when he will go outside and sit. But if the wife is a very open-minded person, they are, they are going to do it together. You will see couples that will tell you, come to the house. Let's have fun together. You'll be trans, but they are very open. They, 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 there are some trans girls that will be as for me, I don't like women, but there are trans girls that are attracted to women that can mm -hmm. have stuff with women. Okay. So there are, there are um, couples that will be like, ah, can you fuck my wife? Let me watch. Hmm. Stuff like that. There is, there is plenty. Okay, so we're going to wrap up soon, but I have two questions. Okay. I think my first question goes to, is for people that are like you, like trans people or queer people that are still hiding. They're scared to like come out. They're scared to like, you know, really express or even accept. Because I'm sure that it must be a lot for somebody to finally get to the point where they say, you know what, I'm accepting myself for who I am. If there is somebody watching us right now that is still in the closet, right? and is worried about what people would say, and you had to give them one advice, what advice would you give them? Okay, the advice I'll give them is to take their time. Because <laughs> coming out is not even easy. Right. You have to check like your surroundings, people around you. Like You need to like take your time. If it means you not to come out, don't come out too. Because if you come out, there are some... Um, families that if you come out you might come from like a very rich family they would disown you and you will start mm. from scratch and it's not something some people want for themselves right. so if you want to stay in a uh, in a closet for the like forever i don't i think that's cool or just try if there is any way any means for you to like travel as i always say because if you travel there is no way it's going to be bad for you there because if you travel and you are a queer person there there is always a way for you to survive. Not like Nigeria. Because many queer people are suffering, are dying in Nigeria. Mm. Plenty. You will see somebody now, they'll start beating a queer person and they'll post on blogs. For, for somebody that did not even do anything, they are just being themselves. Right. Then they will now, uh, maybe uh, somebody that kill somebody, maybe somebody that like kill, like all those people that kill girls, kill, like, is yeah. raining now. 
they will now post the person and now be blurring their face killer they will blur killer face but somebody that is queer that did not do anything is their body is their life like they can be whoever they want to be it's them that will be they will be beating and be posting on blogs for no reason so as for me i'll just say you should take your time you should not rush things if you are not in position to come out just stay in the closet just stay and be doing your thing in on a low that's like very much better because coming out is not easy as for me when i came out it was not easy for me i had to like strip um sleep on the streets for a while mm. it's not easy not like i was not having where to stay but i was scared to go home right so i don't advise anybody to like come out when it's not the right time except your mother or your family somebody that understands you because there are some mother out there that will be like ah, you be my picking no no matter how it is you are still my child i cannot throw you away but there are still some parents that don't you can't even try right. it. You can't even have that conversation with them. Yes. Okay. And I, I know I said I had one more question, but I think I have two more. So now this okay. question is directed towards like Nigeria. I don't know. I don't want to say the government, but if you could implement one law to protect queer people in Nigeria, what would that law be? What would you do differently for queer people in Nigeria? Or if there's anybody that is watching this right now that is homophobic, and it's just like, you know, there are people that can't stand queer people. They're like, you know, oh, yes, yeah. we have to kill them. We have to. So if there's somebody that is watching right now that belongs to that category, what message would you pass to them? Okay. What I'm going to tell the homophobic people is queer people are not the problem of Nigeria. If you like get close to like the queer people, like they are the most nicest people, they are very free, they are kind, most like. I would say like all of them because all the queer people are, I know, they are very soft. Mm -hmm. Like they are nice. And all. Like we are not like the problem of Nigerians. Like I just wish Nigerian can like, Nigerians can like adapt, like to like change some things. But anyhow it is, we are still going to live no matter right. how it is. And there is nothing is, they are going to change about it. If queer does not exist, at all, then there is not going to be anything like maybe a name called queer or right. anything. So I just feel like queer is supposed to exist and yes, it's supposed to exist and that's just it. So they, I just feel like there's nothing they are going to change about it. It's better they accept people for who they are. Those people are not doing anything bad to mm. anybody. They are just being themselves. Like queer people are very like Okay. Okay, and then the last question I have now is for parents that are raising children that are queer or that are struggling with their identity. What would you say to the parents? Okay. I'm sorry, but as a parent, if your child come and meet you and tell you, Mommy, I'm gay, and you say, Come on, get out. You are devil. I will rebuke. You have failed. You cannot do that. That child will not change. There's no, that child is going to, like, if that child, if you are locking up that child not to come out, not to go, if that child leaves house, he's not going to come back again. It's going to be hard. So, as if your child comes to meet you, me, as a mother, I just feel like if your child comes to meet you and tell you, Mommy, ah, I'm, I'm feeling this kind of way, maybe I'm gay, or I'm feeling I'm trans, or stuff like that. Just sit that child down. Tell the child, is this really what you want? If the child tell you, if the child tell you, that ah, yes, mommy, this is what I want, tell the child that we are going to give it time. Don't force who they are not on them. They will not change. They will just be scared of you. They cannot even tell you things they want right. to tell you. Because there are plenty of things that these children want to tell you sometimes. Or because you are not free with them, they cannot just tell them that. I'll, let's give it time. Let's give it time. Maybe it's because of, like, maybe it's something you are think on your head. It's not like that's all it's going to really be. Let's, let's just give it, like, time. Or just take the children to, like, a psychologist. A, a therapist. A therapist, sorry. Thank you so much. We've learned a lot from this conversation. I'm so grateful. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us today. This is a lot for you to put yourself out there like that. So I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So now we've come to the end of this episode. And... 
to round this off, I will just say that I do not pass any judgment to anybody personally, whoever you choose to be or however you choose to identify. If you are a consenting adult, I have so much grace for that. And I hope that you find the strength to come out if you choose to. But if you don't, I hope that you find the strength to live with yourself and to accept yourself for who you are. And I hope that you know that, no, you're not a devil. No, you're not a demon. And, you know, I wish you all the best in your journey of self-identity. So we'll see you again, same time next week on Doing's Kana. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs>